How do you gracefully bring up to your parents that they might want to get checked for psychological issues? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, my boyfriend left me in the middle of the night. A little backstory here. I, 20-year-old female, am a paramedic. I work 24 to 48 hour shifts. Recently, I've been working 90 some odd hour weeks in an attempt to get my taxes paid. My boyfriend, 23-year-old male, and I have been together for a while, and we get along so well that we've never fought with one another. However, the last week or so, we finally hit the point in our relationship that we did have our first disagreement. In total, there's been about four episodes of us bickering back and forth at one another for maybe 15 to 20 minutes before we say our apologies. For context, one of those disagreements, so to speak, was him expressing to me that he felt I was losing interest because his hoodie was no longer in my closet. Twas in the laundry because I wore it. I expressed to him that it was only because I'm completely and utterly exhausted. Anyway, so last night we go out to dinner and I fall asleep at the restaurant. I didn't mean to, however, he was distraught because if we aren't arguing, then you're sleeping. We hashed it out and he says we're okay. Sometime around 3am, he wakes me up and tells me he can't sleep and that he's going to go home and try to get some rest before he has to go to work. Understandable, so we say our goodbyes. I wake up at 5am for work and I see that all of his stuff is gone from the bathroom. Clothes are gone, pictures are taken down, and a photograph of us on top of my kitchen counter with my front door key sitting on top of it. He texts me around 11am, good morning, I ignore him. He then proceeds to text my sibling and say that he's not sure if we've broken up, and it depends on whether I reply. I am fuming at this point. In my mind, leaving your key on the kitchen counter is a freak you, I don't need this anymore, goodbye. Here's the kicker. He began saying that it was because we kept fighting and that he didn't know where our relationship stood, but he was tired of getting hurt. He also was saying that the main reason he left is because he couldn't sleep and that taking his things was impulsive. I start cold shouldering him and now he did it because he was scared I was going to leave him first. I didn't love him anymore, etc. He finally took accountability for it and admits he did it to break up and he knew I would be upset. He's also saying he regretted it the second after he left. He's been apologizing for the last six hours. He says it was stupid of him to do. The problem is, how do I trust him again? He slinked off at 3 a.m. after a tough week together. He took hours to take responsibility for it. How do you even move forward from that? What if I never trust him again? Or no longer feel comfortable bringing issues forward about our relationship and fear that he leaves me? He suggests we go to couples therapy. I don't know what to do. Is this my sign to leave before we go any farther? First of all, I have a lot of respect for OP working as a paramedic. I just gotta say, if you're working 90 some odd hour weeks, how can you even have a relationship? Obviously, the partner jumped to assumptions here, but the problem is, OP's working more than there are daylight hours in the entire week. If this is a similar schedule for OP going forward, if you're with somebody that can't adapt and be happy with what time you can give them, or what attention you can give them, then how is it ever really going to work out? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, how do I, 37-year-old male, handle my wife's 37-year-old female, parents, 65-ish, frustrations of me not wanting us to see them while my wife has a high-risk pregnancy and they may have gastroenteritis. More context inside. Context. Wife got pregnant at 37, higher risk through IVF, very complicated and challenging process. Wife's parents live two and a half hours drive away and are always putting us through a lot of peer pressure for us to see them. We skipped visiting my wife's in-laws two weekends in a row for Christmas slash New Year's Eve due to their COVID-19 symptoms and positive test. To their frustration and guilt-inducing message, they were somewhat understanding but went into great lengths into expressing their disappointment. My wife is entering the 29th week of pregnancy, third trimester, and the plan was to go see them this weekend instead. We just learned that they're guarding their two-year-old granddaughter in their own home, where we were supposed to stay at this weekend, because she has gastroenteritis. Last time their granddaughter had gastroenteritis last year, they caught it and after two days of them being symptom free, we visited them and we caught it, leading her to pass out for a short while and me vomiting heavily all night long and being completely dehydrated, extremely weak for more than 36 hours. Her parents complained that they had a bad night's sleep because my vomiting woke them up. 
Now they're saying that we should come visit them anyways this weekend because her granddaughter's gastroenteritis is almost over. My wife responded to them saying that we won't stay over as planned but we could come for a visit during brunch and then drive back home in the evening instead. They haven't responded but I can already assume they'll be disappointed. Every time we change our plans to visit them, they make us go through a guilt driving process. I've looked for information online and information suggests that dehydration and strong vomiting can induce contractions in pregnant women in the third trimester and sometimes induced labor. I'm very worried about my wife entering into labor too early if she catches gastroenteritis and having an extremely premature birth. I'm not feeling comfortable with exposing my wife to this risk. Yes, she's the one carrying the baby, but it's my future family too. If she ends up having a preterm birth with higher health risks and possibly lifelong complications, I'll be the one stuck with that deal too. We're seeing our family doctor to seek medical advice later this week, as well part of the regular pregnancy follow-ups. I suspect our doctor will give medical advice, but not relationship advice. How do I handle this difficult conversation with her and my in-laws? Thank you. Well, I think what OP says is extremely important and I think it's vital that they don't go. If there's a chance that you're going to catch something because the granddaughter is almost over it, why ever dare go and endanger not only yourselves, but potentially risking the entire future life experience of your unborn child? I mean, if you explain it clearly in a non-hostile way to her, that she's literally trying to gamble on this kid's life, life experience, long-term health throughout their entire life, all on a chance that they don't catch something from somebody who still has the something or is just getting over it by going to a brunch. Is that truly worth it? Is that truly a smart decision? Our next story is, I, 29-year-old female, feel really insecure about my gift for my boyfriend's 33-year-old male, parents, 70s-year-old male and female. Am I overreacting? Hey all, maybe I'm being weird about this, but I could really use some perspective here. I met my current boyfriend Gerard at a bar last summer and we've been together ever since. It sounds really corny, but I hit the jackpot with this man. He's sweet, funny, kind, caring, driven, and principled. Every day, he makes me feel so loved and appreciated, whether it's by sending me random texts asking me if I know how sexy I am or surprising me with takeout from my favorite restaurant. I know, really corny, but I can't stress enough just how special Gerard is to me. A couple of months into the relationship, Gerard told me he wanted to introduce his parents to me. I was excited and said yes. That's when I learned that he's from old money, the kind where the trust fund will not run out for two to three generations. That being said, he has a successful career of his own and makes his own money. He didn't want to tell me about his financial status because he'd been burned a few times in the past by past relationships, which is understandable. While I don't make near as much money as he does, I am financially comfortable. I was a little unsure, but he reassured me that his parents wanted to meet me and that if they gave me any blowback, he'd have my back. I agreed and we met at a nice restaurant. His parents, Rose and Nick, won me over. They made me feel welcomed and asked me all sorts of questions about my hobbies, life, and everything in particular. When we parted, I told his parents that I hoped they were proud of Gerard because of how wonderful he turned out to be. They said that they were, and they told Gerard not to lose me. Ever since then, Rose and Nick always ask how I am and how my latest sewing projects are going. Rose and Nick's 40th wedding anniversary is on February 1st. Because Rose mentioned how much she likes the photos of my projects, I decided to make them one. I usually make my own gifts. The reason for this is because I feel like it's more meaningful. For his birthday last month, I made Gerard a needlepoint of Aragorn standard from the Lord of the Rings. He adored it and has it proudly hanging in his office. Gerard knows I'm making this quilt for Nick and Rose and helped me pick the fabric. One of my friends has a fabric printer, so I got copies of pictures to make panels for the quilt. Things like their engagement photo, their wedding photo, Gerard's baptism, pictures of vacations, etc. It's coming along nicely. This morning, Gerard asked me if I was willing to help him pick out a purse for Rose. Her birthday is in a couple of weeks. Imagine my surprise when I saw it was a Louis Vuitton purse. I guess that's when it really sank in for me just how much money this family has. I don't know why, but it made me feel really inadequate. Almost like I don't measure up. At once, I got unsure about my own gift. I'm not sure what to make of my feelings or even if I should be having these feelings at all. Should I bring it up to Gerard or should I just keep my mouth shut? Am I being a gold digger? You know what probably would screw things up? 
OP being doubtful when they like OP, feeling like they're inadequate because they're giving a heartfelt, handmade gift. So what if it's not a multi-thousand dollar priceless jewelry item? Don't self-sabotage here. They can't just go out there and spend a ton of money on a handmade quilt with lots of priceless memories sewn into them. Our next story is my 32-year-old female, wife 31-year-old female, wants to become a full-time housewife after years of studying to become a doctor. But I'm totally against it. Hello, I, 32-year-old female, have been with my wife, 31-year-old female, since our second year of high school. From what I remember, she's always wanted to become a doctor, a pediatric doctor to be exact. While I kept changing my mind and was continuously unsure about what I wanted, my wife was extremely dedicated on wanting to be a pediatric doctor. She studied her butt off in college and cried from frustration as she studied. Seeing her work so hard gave me the motivation to finish school and become a lawyer. We've been each other's biggest supporters throughout this journey. From working odd jobs to supporting ourselves, having cheap dates in the park and crying from stress and frustration. It was like finally seeing the end of the tunnel with my partner next to me the entire time. We got married right after I graduated from law school and started living in a bigger place with the money we had saved together. She had finished her internship this year and is about to legally become a licensed doctor. However, her happy tune about becoming a doctor suddenly changed. I'm not really sure when her obsession with becoming a housewife started, but seeing her go from being a career-oriented woman with hopes and dreams to wanting to become a housewife gave me severe whiplash. I just couldn't understand what could make her change her mind so suddenly. I tried asking about it and she said something along the lines of, I just want to cook and clean for you, live a simple life. I assumed that maybe she was feeling lonely since I've been working a lot, so I told her we'd go on more dates and spend more time together, but again, she insisted that she wanted to be a housewife. Don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with being a housewife, but to give up your long years of studying and hard work to stay home and cook is absurd. We're already splitting the chores at home and we've just been on very equal footing since forever. I just can't seem to read her. Maybe being a doctor just isn't for her? Or perhaps she got bored? I just don't get it. I want her to do what makes her happy because I truly love her and she's my entire world, but is stopping everything and throwing away the chance of having one of the most respectable jobs on earth just to stay home and do chores really worth it? Maybe I'm asking the wrong questions. Maybe she's trying to tell me something and I'm being dense. I wish I could read her mind, I just don't get it. At the end of the day, I just want to know why and maybe convince her otherwise. As much as I think that it's a bad idea, it's still her life, but I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive myself if I let her throw her career away. She could be burnt out, she could be having feelings of inadequacy, maybe she's irrationally worried internally that maybe she wouldn't be a very good pediatric doctor for whatever reason. Maybe things are getting too real for her as she's getting closer and closer to the finish line. I think if anything, it would definitely benefit her to speak to a therapist just to make sure what's going on is actually out there and discussed. Maybe after all the years you put into and pour into working towards that degree, maybe they're just flat out burnt out. Maybe they just need like a gap year or something to really regain their bearings. Our next story is boyfriend wants to break up with me because I can't help him financially right now. My boyfriend, 30, and I, 20-year-old female, got into a huge fight today after going to the grocery store. He asked me to help him pay for his car note, which I said I might be able to, but my dad just died and I've been dealing with all the stuff to go with this and this means I haven't been able to work. But he blew up at me after I said I wanted to buy a new game for my Nintendo Switch. He was super upset because I had money for me and not for him. He said I lied to him about paying his car note. I told him I let him know, and I never did, and he never asked me, so he thinks I lied about paying it. We got into a huge fight continuing on the ride home. I basically spent most of the car ride screaming at him, what the freak is wrong with you? I'm a 20-year-old and my 31-year-old boyfriend is asking me to help him financially. He said that he didn't want to be in a relationship with someone who can't support him financially and also be there for him. I've been helping him for months, but I said no this time because he's in debt with me right now and I'm not having it. He's upset also because he feels like I've been distant since my dad died, and instead of expressing that he feels I'm distant and busy for these past two weeks, he blows up at me about this. I don't get it. Yeah, so OP's definitely not in the wrong. I think OP should probably recognize that 
OP and this guy probably in two different stages of their lives anyways. Personally, I would say don't stick around and try to bail out this guy who has way too many problems already on his own. Our next story is, boyfriend gave me a marriage ultimatum. He needs to marry for immigration and religious reasons. He told me he needs to make this next step in his life and that he has to do better in practicing his faith. He's broke and has a poor credit score. In his religion, the man is responsible for his wife. So I'm just wondering how I would be taken care of if this is his current situation. I don't feel comfortable getting married if we're going to be struggling financially right from the get-go. He told me he's gotten opportunities from women that are interested in marrying him. He said he declined or ignored all of them because he wants to be with me. I don't know if this is true or if he's trying to make me jealous. I talked to my mom about it and she said she feels he's brainwashing me and that I should not be pressured into this. Is this manipulation? How do I move forward? I mean, it does sound manipulative to me, especially when he's like, oh, well, listen, I've had plenty of girls who said they wanted to marry me right away, but I only want you, so please, come on, let's do this. Just him going around saying, listen, there's all these women that are throwing themselves at me that I had to turn down. Is that alone not a big enough red flag? Who are these women and why are they throwing themselves at you? Our next story is, my 26-year-old male, boyfriend, 24-year-old male, has been making sexist comments about my best friend's 26-year-old male, partner, 24-year-old female. I've been with my boyfriend for 4 months and known my best friend for 8 years. We all moved in together in a 2-bedroom apartment 3 weeks ago. Neither me nor my boyfriend knew my best friend's girlfriend much beforehand. I would say, however, that she has been an excellent roommate. My boyfriend has been making sexist comments to me about her from the beginning. He accused her of only getting into college and only getting her job because of her looks and said she doesn't seem that smart for someone in her occupation. He said that it was BS that the girl here is making more money than all the guys. He always calls her the girl here. He accused her of not doing enough chores, even though she was doing her fair share without having to be reminded, in contrast to my boyfriend who always avoids them. He said she was too obsessed with her career because men don't care about women's careers and suggested she should be more focused on improving her body instead. Then when she bought a new smart TV for all of us to see, he accused her of rubbing her wealth in our faces to emasculate us. This morning, he asked me to sleep with him before he had to get ready for work and I said yes. Then he started complaining how it's so unfair that the girl here can get a good 9 to 5 job while I have to work Sundays. I told him, it sucks that you have to work today, but I don't understand why you seem to resent her so much. Then he said, come here, we don't have too much time. I told him, I don't want to bang a sexist. He started throwing a tantrum and accusing me of being secretly attracted to her and not seeing her flaws because of that. When he left, I was feeling absolutely disgusted by my boyfriend's misogyny. I don't know if I should just break up with him or if I should tell my best friend and his girlfriend about any of the things that he's been saying behind her back. I'm honestly embarrassed that I've even tolerated it for so long, but I don't know how I should proceed at this point. So this guy can't even get his own story straight. He says she only got to where she is because of her looks, but then also says they're too needy and need to work on their body. So which is it? I think this guy is a pretty clear top tier candidate for getting dumped in the trash can. Our next story is, my 33-year-old female, fiancé 29, was talking to another girl, lied, manipulated, and gaslit about it, then came clean the next morning. I, 33-year-old female, have been engaged to my fiancé 29-year-old male for three weeks. One night while we got together, he'd fallen asleep but I was still awake, at approximately 11.30pm he got a phone call. I looked over and saw a picture of a girl in just a first name. He ignored the call, then when I asked who it was, the lies started. He said, no one, then he tried to tell me it was a work call from a man. So I told him I saw a picture of a girl, but then he showed me his recent calls to try to prove it was work, but I just reached over and swiped down to see the name of the girl who had just called. Very clearly a female name, just the first name. He started saying he'd been making calls about wedding venues. He knew I'd been stressed trying to find one. He said he was trying to help me out. He tried to prove it by calling a number of an actual wedding venue. I asked why she had a contact picture, and he said it was the new Apple update. When someone updates their picture, it updates in your phone too. Which I believe that is true, but I'm not great with techie stuff. I can't even remember all the lies he told. I told him to call back that exact number, and he said he didn't want to. Then he said he deleted the number. Lie on top of lie, I didn't believe any of it. 
I'm a very trusting, sometimes naive person, but I knew he was lying. He left and went to sleep on the couch. The next morning when I came out, I asked again, who was she? He told me what he claims is the whole story. He says she was someone he went to high school with. She was working at Walmart one night about six months ago. When he went in and they recognized each other, they exchanged phone numbers. Note, he says he did tell her about me. Now to explain what happens next, you need more context. We're both very active in our local churches. He's a part of outreach teams that work to reach to people who are searching for a church home. So he tells me the original intent of them exchanging numbers was so that he could help her out and invite her to the church. That sort of thing. Their conversations were friendly, just catching up since high school, that sort of thing. He said they texted very infrequently over the course of about four months. But then he said he could tell the conversations weren't going the way he wanted them to. Basically that she started coming on to him, so then he just ghosted her. He said they hadn't talked in months. So here are my thoughts. I'm very hurt by the initial lie when she called. I'm also hurt that he didn't consider or respect me enough to tell me this had happened. I also really don't know if his whole story is true. I do believe parts, but some of it doesn't seem to add up. My question is, if there was nothing going on, why is he so defensive about it? Why is he going immediately to, okay, well, I just deleted the number. I'd be more than willing to bet that there's some app that OP just doesn't know about or hasn't checked that they have each other on and are talking a lot more frequently than something that would be as blatant as texting. That would at least be my concern. If there really was nothing going on, there's nothing to hide and there's no bad feelings, he wouldn't have immediately lied and lied and lied. Our next story is, was I, 24 year old male, stupid to get upset that my girlfriend, 23 year old female, ruined our planned sex night? So we've hardly hooked up for about 6 to 8 months now. We moved into a new place in November and only did the deed about 2 times. For me, I don't see it as just hooking up. It's special to me because it's with the girl I love and it makes me feel so close to her and loved. Anyway, we recently talked about how I feel like we've been getting less and less intimate over time. And how this has been making me feel like she's finding me less attractive and that I think we should try to be more intimate like we used to be. So on Friday, she worked till 8pm and then when she got home, we would have our fun. I had the day off so I made sure that there would be nothing for us to have to worry about. All the laundry was done, all dishes and pots washed, rubbish taken out, house cleaned, clothes ready for her to wear and slippers ready for after she showers that night, and all food was prepared and waiting to be taken out of the fridge for a late dinner. When my girlfriend gets home, I'm excited as I've been waiting for her to get home all day. I listen to how her day was and interact with her as normal. She's telling me how she aches from work. So I offer before we get down and dirty to give her a massage. She says yes and that she would love it, but as she got undressed and on the bed and as I start massaging her, she's telling me she's cold and tired and I offer to give her a blanket and that the massage should help. She then says the massage doesn't matter and at that point we should just get to hooking up. At this point I'm like, sure, okay. But then when I'm initiating, she goes on about how it's late, she's hungry, she's tired and cold, just not seeming like she even wants to do it, and it all just ends up putting me out of the mood. I just told her it doesn't matter and she can go get her shower if she wanted and I would start making dinner. A bit later, she decided that she wanted to order instead and while we waited for it, I got upset and started to tear up at how crappy the night turned out. I just felt stupid for crying about a stupid thing and that it wasn't a big thing to cry over. It's not stupid. OP's out there trying to do their best to get this connection and intimacy with their partner and their partner just doesn't care. They're just so aloof about the whole thing. It hurts, right? You put that effort in and she's just like waving you off and just not even like recognizing any of it. This isn't like a you owe me sex type situation. This is a we're in this together and we haven't done anything in like half a year. Let's have one great night. They agree. And then when the time comes, they can't even just put the effort in to have one good night or attempt to. It's just like every other day for her. And yeah, I can understand why that hurts a lot. I think the next step definitely is trying to understand why she feels the way she does. Is she stressed out? Just overworked? Is she just bored of the relationship? Is she just somebody that has a lower libido? I definitely think that's the next step. Our next story is, my 31 year old male, mom, 66 year old female, is becoming more fearful, angry, and paranoid with age. 
How do I bring it up to my dad, 59 year old male, that she should be checked for dementia slash other psychological issues? This is a really weird situation and I'm not 100% sure what I'm talking about since I'm not a specialist in dementia or Alzheimer's, but basically my mother has become a completely different person in the last half year and I'm becoming so concerned with it that I'm thinking of asking my father to take her to the doctor. Background, my mother has always been the most compassionate, empathetic, rational, and calm person I've ever known. She's intelligent, loves to read, and always had a rational but emotionally in-tune solution to everything. Admittedly, she's played the family therapist countless times, and I don't think anyone in my family could ever repay her for it. However, all of this changed when I moved back in with my parents six months ago, after a stint of bad luck where my girlfriend dumped me and moved out, and I had to scramble together cash for rent and bills after I'd just been let go during layoffs at my work. It wasn't pretty, but my parents were happy to welcome me back in with them. I noticed upon moving back that something was just different about my mom. She seemed really impatient, less caring and curt with me, and I noticed her snapping at my father more too. I chalked this up to a few bad days, which turned into weeks. I thought maybe she was actually mad or disappointed with me for being back at home. Something that would have really shocked me to begin with, since my mom is very nurturing. But after chatting with her, she assured me that she was happy to have me back. It was little things at first, but then it got worse. Soon, everything I had to say she took really crossly. For example, I was walking in our garage with the lights off, stupid, I know, and knocked our garbage can over. My mom came to investigate and I told her with a laugh, oh, just knock some stuff over, guess it's kinda dark in here, and she immediately snapped, I know my garage is dirty, I'll clean it soon, which took me off guard, but I just figured that maybe she misheard me and I rectified the situation, no biggie. However, she's been doing that a lot lately, I'll say something, anything and she'll respond aggressively about something off topic as if I'd insulted her or insinuating something bad. She's also terrified of seemingly normal things now. She almost refuses to drive without my father and I with her, and one evening we could smell smoke through the house because of our neighbors using their wood-burning stove. This is a normal occurrence, and we could see the smoke from the neighbor's chimney. Anyway, my mom was distraught, tearing through the house looking for fire and wondering if she should call the fire department until dad and I talked her down. Now the biggie. Yesterday, I was ranting to my parents, having a beer with my dad and lamenting about my life circumstances. Admittedly, I was getting a little heated, but suddenly, my mom let out this tremendous scream. This ah, which my dad and I nearly fell out of our chairs and we stared at her like she had two heads. And she just started yelling, stop yelling at me. My dad and I talked her down, but she broke apart and started talking about the abuse she endured as a child. Something she's never done before, at least not like this. My mother and I had discussions about how she grew up, but she never fully lost her cool over it, and in such a random way before. It was scary. Afterwards, my father walked my mom to their bedroom and she went to sleep. My dad came out and we both were kind of speechless, not sure what to do or really what to say to each other, so we had an early night. I got to reflecting, and the whole thing just made me feel really bothered. There was clearly something going on with my mom, and there were other things that I noticed too. For example, my mom came around to find me while I was shoveling snow to ask how to cook a ham, which we just had a simple conversation about, and it didn't immediately raise any red flags, but my mom taught me how to cook. She knows how to cook hams and has done so possibly hundreds of times in her life. I thought maybe she was just lonely and was maybe asking how I wanted it cooked, but now I'm not so sure. One of the most frightening things though is that I heard her a few times during the night opening my door to my bedroom to check on me as I sleep. I know this is what she's doing because she used to do it when I was a child. Again, I figured maybe old habits die hard, but she's never done this before in my adult life and actually stopped her nightly check-ins when I was 17. It's making me think something is really wrong with my mom, and I want to ask my dad to bring her in to see a doc and get tested for dementia. However, my dad is an incredibly proud man, and I think doing this would definitely be offensive to both him and my mom. However, I don't know what else to do. My mom is not the same woman I grew up with. I know people change as they get older, but I can tell she's suffering, either by something like dementia or otherwise. I don't know. Please help.
I think it's honestly irresponsible if you don't at least suggest it and try to get things going in that direction. Depending on if there is something, nowadays there are some potential therapies that might be able to at least slow progression a bit. Again, if there was anything actually going on. I mean, if it's just she's having weird thoughts and flashbacks and things that just needs like a therapy, that's honestly great and very treatable, but you have to actually understand where you're at with things before you can have any answers or try to work on anything. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.